Hi everyone and thank you for joining today's webinar on the five criteria for choosing a network performance monitoring solution. I'm Monique Lucy, Director of Product Marketing here at Live Action, and I will be your moderator for today. So I have just a couple of housekeeping items to touch on before we get started. Feel free to ask questions during this session using the chat or the Q&A panel. This session is being recorded and we will post the recording to the Live Action website in just a few days. It'll be located under the resources menu in our on-demand webinars. And additionally, we will continue to host this session in the coming months. So if you don't all get all your questions answered today or you have more later, you can always join us for another session. So if this is the first time joining a live action webinar, welcome. I just want to make a quick introduction to live actions network performance management solutions. Our solutions enable network teams to achieve operational and performance excellence to support the success of the business. With live action network management teams are able to improve application performance, accelerate troubleshooting, manage their network readiness, deliver major IT initiatives, and perform advanced reporting and analysis. On our panel today, I'm joined by Timothy Rhodes, Managing Director at Apprise 360 Intelligence, and David Izumo, Principal Technical Marketing Engineer here at Live Action. Welcome both of you, and um, please go ahead, Tim and David, and introduce yourselves and give us a little bit of your background. Great, thank you, uh, Monique. Again, Tim Rhodes uh, with Apprise 360, and we are a market intelligence market research firm where we help companies to understand their uh, customers and their landscape uh, better. Um, I spent previously uh, some time in the network performance management area at uh, CA Technologies prior to the Broadcom acquisition and uh, have always kept a close eye on, on this and enjoying uh, working with live action on this topic. Yes, thank you, Tim. And I'm David Izumo. As Monique mentioned, I'm a principal engineer with Live Action. I've been with the company for quite some time, and I lead a lot of the technical partnerships that we have, for example, with Cisco and other, uh, other network equipment uh, vendors as well. Looking forward to the presentation today, and thank you all for joining. Thank you both. So now I'm going to turn it over to Tim and to David. Tim will walk you through his research findings and David will provide some live action insights. That's great. Thank you, Monique. Um, what I'm excited about is that this was a, a different type of a research study that we did and being here with David to provide some of the uh, live action perspective and some of his perspective to, to the findings is really going to be interesting and, and, and of great value. And so what we did for this study is this was a primary research study. We actually reached out to 40 different existing uh, power users of, of four different platforms of live action, of SolarWinds, of NetScout and Riverbed to really understand what were the problems that they were trying to solve, how they're using their platforms and really dive deep into some of those platforms capabilities. Again, these were primary research interviews. We had um, discussions with uh, you know, everyone from a, a vice president of IT to a, a power user, such as a network uh, solutions engineer to really understand those trends. And so when we go through this, we're going to be talking through the lens, the voice of the customer, through the lens of the customer about network performance management uh, trends and perceptions around live action, solar winds, NetScout and, and Riverbed. So one of the first questions that we asked was, tell me a little bit about some of the challenges that you're facing today in your position as a network engineer or as a, uh, you know, someone that's, that's leading your network performance management capabilities. And there was really, you know, six things that came up across these 40 different interviews that were consistent. Hybrid IT, concerns around um, secure uh, access service edge, really getting involved in shaping the digital experience, monitoring and managing SD-WAN, uh, really trying to identify what is the future of AI ops, and then scale an enterprise when it comes to NPM within their enterprise and their organization. And I should say these interviews were with enterprise companies. These were companies that were generally over 5,000 employees, um, some as large as you know, 100,000. So fairly large, mature organizations 
that had you know built up their NPM and their and their network environments you know uh, uh, quite significantly over over time. So that first trend, that hybrid IT trend, this came up a lot of times where you know many users probably like you are dealing with how do I manage heterogeneous environments? How do I deal with multi-cloud? How do I manage new and upcoming uh, resources like containers and Kubernetes and microservices? And especially now with COVID, how do I manage scale and performance with voice, voice over IP and unified communications? But a lot of network engineers and network managers and IT managers were talking about, how do I make sure I have an optimized network operations system as my company grows and as the demands of the network grow as well? The second thing that came out was the secure edge service at, you know, edge um, uh, issue. And this was, how do I create a network that can manage all these dynamic set of, of endpoints? And how do I do that and combine uh, technologies like WAN and cloud-based network security to make sure my network is secure end to end and not just in the physical network, but endpoints and cloud and, and, and virtual environments. The third uh, trend was the digital experience. And this was probably the, the, the most vocal out of all the 40 interviews where IT managers were increasingly being under pressure to be a part of the end user in the digital experience, not just internally, but also for that company's uh, external users as well. Everything from application performance to cloud and SaaS performance. And many of them for the first time were having to deal with things like capacity management and resource management. And of course, tried and true root cause analysis, but all around that consistent performance while correlating business service and, and revenue. Many of these network managers uh, that I spoke to for the very first time were having to take their network performance analytics and correlate that to business revenue to prioritize their growth. The fourth trend was SD-WAN and SD-WAN adoption. Um, and this was around issues like bandwidth improvement and SD-WAN security. The fifth one was AI ops. And this is where there was uh, the most variability. And a lot of it is around the definition of AI ops. What was AI ops? And we heard that a number of different definitions around everything from AI driven optimization to AI driven you know, provisioning to AI driven analytics. There's a lot of companies out there trying to understand exactly what is AI ops, uh, you know, cut through the noise and how can it help me? And then the last one was scale and security. And this was something a lot of the enterprise uh, network network managers talked about in terms of not just network uh, you know, scale and security by itself, but how do I adopt a network performance management solution that can scale with my, the, the needs of my organization. You know, as I add more devices, as I add more virtual devices, um, you know, as telemetry becomes more important, as more compliance issues uh, become you know, part of uh, you know, my domain, all of those things really related to scale. So, you know, what we asked were, what were the five factors that you used to select your NPM solution, your network performance management solution and and we asked them to you know grade uh, these factors as well as to you know, put them in order and the first one that we heard consistently was you know does the vendor platform for npm provide a comprehensive end-to-end -end, uh, visibility and performance management solution can this solution really be able to monitor um, and and analyze performance for my entire network, not just physical network, but virtual and cloud and applications. The second factor that many of these buyers and these customers use, regardless of what vendor they chose, was to choose a solution that's able to support granular, detailed network traffic and analysis. They wanted to be able to understand um, that traffic in detail, to understand bandwidth, to understand capacity, and to be able to do that in real time. The third thing that came up as a factor for uh, selecting an NPM solution was, does the solution have complete and detailed application visibility and application performance monitoring? I heard a number of times from these network engineers that the application is the new face of the network and we have to have NPM solutions that can not only correlate application performance, but actually be involved with application performance itself. The fourth one was, is the solution capable of monitoring 
enterprise networks and organizations without performance issues? Is it going to contribute to the performance issues of the network or uh, is it lightweight enough to be able to do the monitoring without impacting the network uh, performance itself? And then the fifth one you know, is right back to the AI ops solution is does the NPM solution incorporate and utilize AI ops to really focus and enable understanding of, 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 of advanced anomalies and be able to do advanced anomaly detection as well as correlation. But there was also kind of a sub piece of this and can it do it with visualizations to help aid in the understanding of these environments. They wanted uh, solutions that were highly visible and visual, um, not only for their own correlation and their own benefit, but so they can also share that with others you know, within the organization uh, as well. And so I'm just going to go through briefly each one of these selection factors and, and talk a little bit about what we heard from each of these customers. As I mentioned, the first one was, does the vendor have this end-to-end -end network visibility and performance management? And the points that came up in the interviews here were when they were selecting an NPM solution, they wanted one that could monitor and manage the complete network, not just network devices, but everything from SD-WAN to cloud environments to wireless devices, of course, their VoIP, which was increasingly important this past year, um, applications and data centers. But they wanted the NPM solution to be able to do this in an automated fashion and be able to automate baselines and trending metrics. They wanted a solution that could incorporate uh, health analytics. They wanted a solution you know, that could uh, incorporate, of course, root cause analysis and, and, and performance uh, insights on the network and the network components itself. And so the customer feedback that we got when we when we started interviewing live action customers was this perception that live action had the ability to collect all this data across the network in real time and to be able to do it from um, multi-vendor network uh, elements, including everything from SD-WAN to applications to data center to cloud environments. Um, and that customers of live action, especially those of, of live NA, really liked the fact that it could automatically identify anomalies and advanced anomalies and surface, surface those when in a prioritized manner. So be able to surface these anomalies based upon what had the most significant impact or the probability of, of, of significant impact. But they also liked live action because it supported the need for immediate troubleshooting, especially of multi-domain performance as these enterprises talked about as they grow, they're becoming more and more um, multi-vendor, heterogeneous, and multi-domain, and they wanted a solution that could be able to, to monitor and manage the performance across these multi-domains uh, and to be able to, uh, you know, look at this performance in, 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 in real time and in the brain and their nature. So, David, I'd love to just hear about from your perspective, what is the live action perspective um, when you hear this end-to-end -end visibility issue that's coming out from customers? Yes, thank you very much, Tim. And definitely, this is a very important point on the need for end-to-end -end visibility within uh, network performance monitoring. One of the key goals for LiveNX from the very beginning when we started uh, the company and then also uh, came up with the product LiveNX was to provide unparalleled visualization to try to recreate the mental model of the network engineer. And I'll dig into this further in the next slide. But this type of visibility is very important because number one, networks are very complex and it's not getting any easier, especially with the rise of software defined networking, SD-WAN, SASE, as you mentioned earlier, and the migration to the cloud, which is huge for a lot of organizations. This end-to-end -end visibility allows for faster troubleshooting and enables network teams to operationalize new technology like SD-WAN. So as an example, we provide intuitive workflows to manage traditional WAN, SD-WAN, the cloud, as well as the entire network. So to help recreate the mental model of the network, let's think of the way many network engineers actually go ahead and design the network. Oftentimes it starts at the whiteboard and you'll see that in the upper left-hand corner on this, uh, on this slide. They draw various devices and interconnect them via subnets and links and otherwise. 
And typically, network engineers, they don't really think about their environment only with graphs and charts. But that's how a lot of NPM vendors present their data. Graphs and charts are very important, but there is a lot more. With LiveNX, we provide a dynamic whiteboard of sorts to lay out the network in a way that makes sense to the network engineer. We then automatically connect those devices and draw NetFlow or IP fix lines over the top to understand the application path. And this is done for logical topologies like the one you see in the bottom right hand corner. And then also for geotopologies on a geotopology map like you see in the upper right. Uh, so being able to draw application flows over the top really helps to clearly identify where that business critical traffic is going within the network. So first off, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit further about an example use case. And SD-WAN is certainly a very important topic on the minds of many, and there is a clear value for organizations to deploy SD-WAN to optimize their network and gain greater capacity for much less cost while ensuring a high quality of experience for end users and applications. So in this sense, let's see how a user can investigate how SD-WAN is dynamically routing traffic away from performance issues. So notice on this particular slide, we're looking at a, a geotopology map within LiveNX. There's applications running over the top, and those are the pretty colored lines that you see arching its way between these various sites. We have multiple sites here, San Jose, RTP, the two data centers, as well as multiple branches, Chicago, as well as Miami. And those application lines help you to understand exactly which traffic is running across the system. The dashed lines represent tunnels, SD-WAN tunnels, uh, aggregate performance of those tunnels site to site. And of course, we see all the various sites and we gain insights into the service provider performance as well. So by clicking on one of those little dashed lines, we're able to learn more about the performance site to site between these tunnels. So for example, understanding jitter, loss, as well as latency. Now we can click in further and in a three click investigation, understand exactly what's happening site to site. So for example, I'll be clicking on that tunnel between San Jose and Chicago. And notice now we bring up a Sankey diagram where we're able to un understand all of the traffic that's going from San Jose to Chicago. Oh, let's see, let's click on that Sankey diagram. It looks like the slug, there we go. And now we see the traffic running from San Jose to Chicago, the applications on the left-hand side, how those applications are being segmented by the service VPNs or VRFs, the DSCP markings for quality of service, the service provider path that it's taking, along with the status of that service provider. So here we can see that traffic going from site to site. And this is very dynamic in nature. You can click on that play button on the very bottom and that'll kick off a historical playback and all of this traffic will animate across the screen to really understand how those application flows are flowing from one site to another. So now let's get to the next slide. And we'll see here service provider performance and how we can understand in three clicks, this is the third click, to understand all the details site to site. So here's all the application traffic from San Jose to Chicago over the MPLS circuit. But notice that there's a service interruption. There's application traffic and all of a sudden there's no traffic on the MPLS circuit. SD-WAN dynamically moved this traffic to the business internet link. Now, as I scroll down on the page and we'll go to that next slide, we'll be able to understand and see the root cause. The root cause of this traffic getting moved away from the MPLS service provider is because there was critical uh, delay, right? And we noticed that within the table view down below. So because of that high delay of over 200 milliseconds, at this particular point in time, that's why the traffic was moved from one provider, the MPLS provider, over to the business internet path. 
So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit more about that end-to-end -end visibility and how we can really leverage simple workflows to drill down and understand exactly what's happening within the environment. And with that, I'll pass it back over to Tim. Great, thanks, David. Um, so kind of jumping back into the research report, we talked about the first selection factor, and now the second one that we heard from these different uh, network performance management um, decision makers and power users was they wanted to select an NPM solution that really was able to give them that granularity around network traffic and that could correlate that traffic insights uh, and, and to be able to have very detailed real-time deep packet uh, capture and, and related analysis, to have that detailed network traffic monitoring that we talked about, application performance management, to be able to look at uh, transaction correlation with end user sessions, and then to be able to pinpoint and prioritize those performance issues as, is, as it was relating to business services and to business revenue. So when we kind of go to the next slide and we look at some of the customer feedback, um, when we spoke with live action customers, what they really appreciated about live action was the ability to have that uh, detailed and real time and complete packet by packet analysis. So not just sampling, but um, real time packet by packet analysis so they could get in deep and understand latency and performance issues. But also being able to have complete network visibility from ingested packet uh, data, from flow data, from Wi-Fi data, and even device data. They also appreciated the fact that Live NX could ingest um, different types of data, as I mentioned, the net flow, IP fix, S flow, J flow, but also data generated by LiveWire for visibility in the network performance across um, multi-domains and multi-vendors and multi-cloud environments. But they also talked about LiveWire being able to extend functionality to include capturing packet, packets that were transversing the wire into flow data to be able to uh, look at things like how LiveNX um, you know, data was being consumed for that deep performance analytics and visualization. And you can see down here a verbatim quote from one of the individuals that we talked about, about Live Actions platform takes a step-by-step -step look at your traffic via NetFlow export. The traffic is sampled throughout its flow through your network and makes quality of service, routing security recommendations that can be implemented automatically or, or one at a time with point and click and the details amazing. So just one example of some of the customers that we spoke to that really appreciated that. So David, I'd love to hear your perspective on the second uh, selection factor. Absolutely, thank you. Now, because networks can be very complex, LiveNX needs to consume just vast amounts of data to help users make sense of their environment. That data can come in many different forms depending on what's available from the system and the network devices themselves. So as a result, multi-telemetry consumption is extremely important to get a complete picture of the network. So we consume SNMP flow in the form of IP fix, NetFlow, SFlow, JFlow, as Tim was mentioning earlier, along with packet data as well and API data from controllers like software-defined networking controllers and services like ServiceNow. Now, why is this so important? Well, many enterprises have a number of point solutions that are difficult to cross-correlate. So for example, there may be a tool for alerting, another for general up-down statistics of the devices, a tool for flow reporting, and another for packet capture. LiveNX is a single platform to simplify the management and troubleshooting of very large networks. Imagine just having to go from one tool to another from a timing perspective. That could be very difficult to do. So let's now look into an example use case for voice troubleshooting and correction. So in this case, in this example, we'll start from a voice performance alert. And we're gonna actually drill down in this use case from an alert to a path analysis down to the packets, and then we'll look at the fix. But we'll, in this case, drill down into that path analysis. And finally, we'll correlate that back to QoS. But notice in our alerting, we're able to provide quick drill downs to relevant information, like the site data, the device, the conversation, and then even the packets. So let's go to the next slide and we'll, focus in specifically 
on a drill down to the path analysis for this specific conversation. Now, by clicking on that conversation, we'll take you to this next view on this next slide. So here's a path analysis for the voice call with performance issues. So LiveNX was able to identify the conversation throughout the entire network, originating in Los Angeles, going across the MPLS link, and into the data center in New York. And notice the LiveWire data from Los Angeles. LiveWire is from our packet capture and analysis product line. It's capturing packets and in a streaming process, sending live flow data to LiveNX to report on the application performance. Now, by clicking on that peak button that you see for that live wire in Los Angeles, we can automatically drill down directly to the packets. So let's move on to the next slide. By drilling down into the packets, we can get very fine grained details. And this is not simply a dump of all the packets that LiveWire captured, but rather the details of the exact conversations that we're looking at in the path analysis. Now, this is very important for all of us network engineers that have run Wireshark, even just on our laptops or our computers, there's just so many packets on the wire and finding that needle in the haystack can be very difficult. But in this case, we have a guided workflow where we identify that specific voice call that was having problems and we're drilling down to the packets that are relevant only to that voice call itself that you're troubleshooting. To do this with multiple tools, lining up the packets of interest, the exact timing of the event, and other details can be extremely time consuming and very difficult. With LiveNX and our packet capture technology, we make this as simple as possible. So here we see some of the voice details on the left-hand side, including the call quality, the MOS score. And then, of course, you can drill down to the raw packets like you see on the right. But there's one more piece of, of this puzzle and this use case. So let's move on to the next slide. So finally, we can correct the poor voice performance by utilizing LiveNX's QoS capability. We identified packet drops in the voice queue, and a network engineer can then easily add more bandwidth to that class, the voice class, by simply right-clicking on that policy and adjust the QoS. So by leveraging multiple forms of telemetry, including SNMP, flow, and packets, we can identify the application performance problem and even fix the issue, leveraging LiveNX's rich QoS monitoring and configuration capability. So with that, let's learn a little bit more. I'll turn it back over to Tim. Great, thank you. And so, you know, as we kind of walk through, we've talked about the first two selection factors that uh, network buyers use. The third one, is really looking at does the npm solution incorporate the ab the ability to have visibility and insights including performance monitoring of applications and what they talked about is really wanting to be able to analyze and correlate data from multiple different network uh, elements network devices applications and cloud environments and again be able to visualize that packet by packet performance as it relates to application analysis but it was also really focusing on that digital and end user experience monitoring, wanting to make sure both internal and external applications were performing um, as, it as it intended. And then finally, being able to um, have that synthetic user experience and test that before, uh, before going live. And so if we go into some of the customer feedback from um, the interviews and, and we look at what did they specifically say about uh, live action, the feedback from live action users was they loved the, the fact that they could analyze application traffic, but with full visibility into protocol and application types, including voice, uh, video, and instant messaging, as well as file transfer. But they also liked being able to have insights into how a network was being used, how the applications are performing, which ones are sanctioned and unsanctioned. Um, and then finally, live actions APA, the application path analytics feature, which allows users to identify precisely where an application performance issue is originating and correlating the impact of that issue on both other applications as well as uh, other devices. And you can see here from uh, international CPG manufacturer that talked about, you know, one of the things 
that other customers told me about live action was the level of detail, detailed insights for dashboards reporting, especially about segmenting uh, network traffic by type. Live action has very detailed filtering capabilities, which allows for granular capture and review of different types of data for root cause analysis. And that was very representative of the customers that we spoke to of, of live action when it came to application performance. So David, once again, love to go to you and, and learn a little bit more about your perspective with uh, application performance and live action. Absolutely, thank you, Tim. As Tim, you mentioned, complete application visibility is really key for many enterprises. Application monitoring is required across the entire network, across multiple domains, including the LAN, campus, over the WAN, to remote sites and the data center. And of course, there's a huge shift that we're seeing to the cloud. And applications are prolific. They, they can be hosted on premises in private data centers, or they may be migrating to the cloud as we're seeing with so many of our enterprise customers today. End users and business entities, they really don't care where the app is located. They simply need to drive their business objectives and ensure that there's a high level of uh, quality of experience. So Live Action Live NX provides multi-domain visibility across a multi-vendor and multi-cloud environment. And I wanna specifically look at a very important domain and that's in the cloud. So let's see a little bit more about cloud monitoring. And let's go to the next slide. Network engineers find it very difficult to visualize how traffic traverses cloud networks. It doesn't really easily map to their typical mental model. There's a lack of end-to-end -end visibility in a single pane of glass to really understand the how the application traffic is moving from on-premises to the cloud and vice versa. And of course, application performance is also very difficult to understand in cloud environments. So in this slide, let's look at the live action, live NX approach to cloud monitoring. The diagram on the right for cloud networking can get complicated really quickly. And actually, let's go back to that previous slide. There are new concepts that network engineers are not as familiar with. So for example, there's a cloud region, there's availability zones, there's VPCs and VNets and so forth. All of these are newer terms that we're not as familiar with when working with a network on premises. So if we expect network engineers to monitor cloud networks seamlessly, we need to instrument LiveNX in such a way that it's easily recognizable and that network engineers can comprehend it simply. With LiveNX, we abstracted a VPC or a VNet to be visualized like a router. And you see that in the upper left-hand corner. The VPCs, when you think about the VPC or a VNet, can have multiple subnets hosting virtual resources, just like a router has several interfaces tied to different subnets. So some interfaces on a router connect directly to the WAN or the internet, just like in a VPC, there's a virtual private gateway or a VGW or an IGW or an internet gateway. As a result, we can track traffic coming in from a remote site into a VGW or a virtual private gateway, and then out toward the cloud, AWS or Azure public subnet and the resources in the cloud, just as if it were going through a router. So we really wanted to make that connection to typical network engineers, uh, making that connection from the cloud to how things are represented typically in a router. And LiveNX does this by querying for flow logs in AWS or Azure, and then we augment that data with information we retrieve from cloud APIs like AWS CloudWatch. And now let's go to that next slide. So together with LiveNX's capabilities of managing traditional network devices or SD-WAN edges and the cloud, we can easily track traffic to and from on-premises on premises devices to the cloud in a single pane of glass dashboard as you see here, and also get an understanding of that application performance as traffic is going to and from the cloud. So with that, let's turn it back over to Tim for the next selection factor. Great, so we've gone through four. We talked about end-to-end -end visibility. The second one was talking about network traffic. The third one was application performance, monitoring and visibility. And the fourth factor that we heard from buyers that we interviewed was, can the solution be a scalable 
uh, option for me? Will it contribute to my network's performance? Does it require a lot of resources? And can it monitor large scale complex hybrid environments without latency? So a lot of companies as they move into SD-WAN are recognizing you know, some of these options that are out there are very resource and intensive and actually causing some network performance uh, issues. And so they're wanting something that was a bit more lightweight when it came to resource consumption and had the ability to analyze capacity to help plan and predict for needed resources to really maintain that expected uh, performance level. And so if we dig down into the next slide and we look at you know, what were some of the things that uh, live action customers talked about was again, that large enterprise deployment without performance issues or latency, having that detailed monitoring and real-time monitoring, but also that capacity management to be able to predict uh, and understand the reasons that the reasons uh, the resources that they're going to need down the road was a big issue. Supporting capacity planning to make sure that they had the proper number and the type of resources to make sure they could maintain that expected performance internal and 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 external. Um, and so, David, love to hear about your perspective as it comes to uh, comes to live uh, live action here. Thank you, Tim. Yes, LiveNX is really built for scale. And we have many customers managing thousands or tens of thousands of devices distributed across hundreds of sites and multiple geographic regions. LiveNX has a distributed architecture to provide horizontal scale for our largest global customers. So let's dig into that a little bit further. Let's look at the next slide. The LiveNX system can grow with our customers or provide visibility for customers of, of varying sizes. So in this case, the LiveNX server is hosted on premises in the private data center. And from there, it can monitor the campus as well as several remote sites, as you see in, in this slide. Now, as customers grow, let's move on to that next slide. Or if uh, larger customers come to live action and look to leverage our visibility platform, we can scale the system horizontally. So in this case, we still have our LiveNX server deployed on premises in the data center. And just as a note, uh, we have a lot of customers that also want to be able to deploy LiveNX in uh, their private cloud in AWS or Azure, and that's possible as well. So in this case, though, we'll, we'll keep the LiveNX server deployed in the data center. LiveNX is then extended using multiple node collectors, which is distributed geographically. Now, these node collectors pull devices locally via SNMP, but more importantly, uh, these node collectors collect large amounts of flow data closer to where the data of the devices are installed. Right? So we have a node in the data center, another node uh, in the large campuses. Uh, node to handle multiple sites within a region and so forth. Now, why is this so important for scale? Well, in working with large international technology companies, uh, one in a particular, we clocked their head end routers at various data centers, exporting over 100,000 flows per second per device. Now, if we just multiply this by only 10 devices, quickly jump to a million flows per second. That's a huge amount of data. So this architecture is critical to scale with our large customers. And with these node collectors, you can, you can expand horizontally and grow with the company, especially as the uh, network requirements continue to grow and grow and grow. So with that, let's move to the next slide. We can also extend our visibility by including our packet capture and analysis product LiveWire into the mix in each of these locations for strategic packet capture technology. And as the customer continues to expand to many additional regions, perhaps in North America and then in Europe and Asia pack, LiveNX can be expanded to meet their visibility, monitoring and analytics needs. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Tim for that number five selection factor. Yeah, the, thank you, David. So the, so the last factor that we heard from the different interviewees was really wanting to be able to future proof their NPM solution, their network performance management solution, and to be able to incorporate machine learning and in what's kind of being called AI ops, the term, 
Um, but it was really around a, a two different things. It was around being able to identify and analyze more advanced anomalies and, and be able to detect those, detect those in real time and correlate those. And then secondly, be able to visualize these anomalies and uh, the correlation of the dependencies across the entire mo uh, monitored environment. There was a lot of uh, discussion around what is AI ops, what it is, what it isn't, what is what it is not. But I think what everyone came down to in the discussions that we had was we really want to be able to have something that's scalable that uses machine learning to support that anomaly detection, dependency mapping, and event correlation. And we want this machine learning to be able to do this in real time, to be able to support dynamic performance correlations, especially as it comes to prioritizing the customer experience and the digital experience. So voice traffic, when to throttle bandwidth. Um, and then on the security side, which users should be blocked that are potent, you know, potentially uh, you know, harmful. But at the same time, to be able to show this from a visualization standpoint, not only internally for more rapid identification, but to be able to share that with others within uh, the leadership team. So what was some of the customer feedback that we got from live action customers around live actions AI ops? And the feedback that we got was customers, you know, really thought the AI ops platform was beginning to grow effectively, being able to apply machine learning uh, to network data sets to really focus on those two things that they wanted to know more about anomaly detection and correlation. But one of the things that customers talked about was predictive analytics and they noted that uh, live action was uh, doing more here with machine learning as it related to uh, predictive analytics. Um, and then also live actions patented visualization engine that provides a number of different visual insights into the entire network, into visual packet analytics, to visual uh, path analytics, transport views, virtual overlay views, and to be able to provide visualizations, uh, visualizations for site specific performance. This is a quote from one of the um, interviewees that's a, a live action customer, a large international CPG manufacturer that said, AI is kind of getting a bad rap right now, but what live action has done um, has built a very intentional machine learning found, a foundation for live NX to continuously identify patterns and insight from customer metadata and identify anomalous behavior. We need machine learning that can analyze and discover anomalous performance data at scale. And that was really a key quote because a lot of the discussion that we had from buyers, even outside of live, live action customers, was this confusion around AI and machine learning. And what is it? What, what can it do? What can it really do what, versus what's being uh, promoted? And the fact that this customer was able to call out a very specific um, uh, action and a use case uh, the live, live action was able to do was, was, was important to hear. So David, can you talk to us a little bit more about uh, live, live actions AI ops? Absolutely, thank you, Tim. Live actions live in a or live network analytics product works in conjunction with live NX to provide analytics and machine learning uh, for anomaly detection, as Tim was mentioning, and predictive analytics, along with decision automation. It's a big data platform for multi-telemetry and high-scale ingestion. So what does all this mean and what are the capabilities in Live NA? Let's jump to the next slide. So these are the current capabilities of Live NA, application utilization and performance baselining, WAN utilization baselining and prediction. Now the predictive piece is seen on the left side in the screenshot where Live NA will use WAN circuit utilization data to predict when an organization will potentially run out of service provider bandwidth. So we can project that over the next couple of months, as you see in the screenshot on the left-hand side. Also, QoS utilization uh, anomaly detection. And very soon, a large Cisco-based organization will be leveraging our QoS prediction capability to outline on a per queue basis when their QoS policies need to be tuned to allow more bandwidth per class. So just like we were talking about WAN utilization bandwidth on a per circuit level, this customer will be leveraging our QoS prediction 
where on a per queue for voice, video, or business critical classes, when those classes or those queues are gonna be reaching the capacity and when you need to add more bandwidth per queue. Anomaly prioritization in context of per app, per site, and per device is another capability. And all of this is done, of course, at enterprise scale. So let's look at an example and let's jump to the next slide. So by partnering with Live Action, uh, we were working with an energy company and also another medical supply organization. They were able to drastically save valuable time leveraging Live NA. And previously, capacity planning took many hours or, or even multiple days to gather all the data that's needed across very large networks and then create reports and then hand that off to management. With Live Action's Live NA's predictive analytics, network admins are able to come into the office maybe in the morning and then clearly identify WAN circuits that need upgrades uh, with just a few button clicks. They can predict when these critical links will potentially run out of bandwidth. That's so important. Now this provided a significant reduction in time and effort and then really allowed the team uh, to focus their top talent on transformation and innovation to drive the business up upgrades that were needed within these organizations. So a, a, a practical example of leveraging live NA's predictive analytics capabilities for real business outcomes. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Tim. Great, thank you, David. So, so we went through the five selection factors that um, buyers uh, had, had highlighted to us. We went through and, and talked about the first one being end-to-end uh, -end visibility and performance management. The second one being, can the solution perform granular network traffic uh, analytics? Uh, the third one being, can the solution perform application visibility and performance monitoring? The fourth was, can it do all of this at scale with capacity management? And the fifth one that we just talked about was incorporating machine learning and, and, and AI ops. And so those were the five common uh, decision factors so we switched the tables in the interview and we talked about, um, tell us a little bit about your network performance vendor as it relates to what you know about the other vendors, including SolarWinds and Live Action, NetScout and, and, and Riverbed. And we asked them to not only you know, qualify this, but quantify it and rank it. And so in the companion um, uh, white paper here, we actually go through by different features and capabilities and rank these based upon how customers um, uh, told us and, 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 and their actual performance uh, that they're seeing on, on, on a regular basis. So if we go to the next slide and we look at kind of the first section here, and a lot of these follow those five factors that we just talked about. Uh, so the first one being end in network performance, live action customers highlighted this as a strength in terms of being able to have um, uh, end to end uh, experience monitoring across all different types of network um, uh, elements for SD-WAN, for LAN, network monitoring, cloud monitoring and applications. Uh, they, they gave live action very high remarks for digital experience monitoring, but they also felt that live action had quite a bit of differentiation and value when it came to SD-WAN monitoring, especially uh, visibility uh, into underlying uh, underlays and, and overlays, tunnel performance and lifecycle monitoring, as well as bringing to the surface real-time visual visualization of end-to-end -end application performance. They also gave live action very high remarks versus other vendors when it came to cloud monitoring, especially multi-cloud environments. So if we continue in the analysis and the questions that we ask, the next three were around applications and, and unified communications and QoS, um, live action scored very, very high in those last three around unified communications, especially Cisco quality of service, and then advanced anomaly detection and correlation. And this is where those live action customers really focused on the machine learning capabilities for um, not only anomalous behavior, but creating dynamic baselines. And this is where there was um, some perceived parity when it came to application performance. Um, you know, all the vendors are really moving forward heavily here and uh, double downing on, on application performance metrics. And so uh, live action versus the pack definitely, uh, you know, came in strong there. 
So the last section around the comparative uh, vendor analysis was things around um, uh, alerting and notifications, capacity planning, analytics and reporting, of course, AI ops and the enterprise performance. And where live action really came out strong in the interviews was in capacity planning and being able to support um, uh, analyzing where things are at from a resource standpoint uh, as, it, as it relates today, but to ensure there is an overutilization or underutilization of resources, as well as bandwidth and processing power needs and, and how you need to plan for proposed network expansions, as well as uh, new applications. But also live action came out very strong when it came to analytics and reporting uh, for AI ops. But the one that had quite a bit of differentiation was enterprise performance. And we heard a lot from buyers where this is becoming an increasing issue with other vendors around seeing um, performance degradation and latency with their, uh, with their NPM solutions as they scale and add more elements as they rely more on cloud and they expand applications. And this is where live action continue to uh, bring in high remarks among uh, the customer base. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to reach out to you know, a live action sales rep to get the entire white paper uh, in, its, uh, in its entirety, the, the, the narrative section as it goes into much more detail here around what interviewees talked about were uh, comparative strengths and weaknesses among these four vendors. So with that, Monique, I'll turn it back over to you to finish this up. Thanks so much, Tim and David. So now you've heard a lot about the five network performance management selection factors, and hopefully you've gained some valuable insights to guide your network performance initiatives. So here's just a quick summary of how live action is different from other network management tools. We provide end-to-end -end network visibility in a single pane of glass across the entire network, including campus, branch, data center, public cloud, WAN, SD-WAN, and we're vendor agnostic with the broadest support of key network vendors, and we offer the broadest telemetry, including NetFlow, Packet, SNMP, API, IPFIX. We have an enterprise scale platform with real time and historical monitoring without compromise, and we provide unmatched data fidelity and the finest level of granularity with predictive analytics to proactively identify, troubleshoot, and resolve network performance issues leveraging ML and AI. So with that, I'm going to pause here because I see that we have a few questions that have come into the chat. Um, so here's the first one, David, I think you might, this one might be for you. How do you collect required data to, and telemetry from devices your customer does not own? For example, cloud services hosted in AWS. Sure, thank you for that question. So with the cloud monitoring in AWS and Azure, for example, uh, what we do is we leverage the flow logs coming out of uh, those cloud services. Uh, and then we leverage that data and visualize it just like it's IP fix or NetFlow. We also augment the flow logs data with uh, API connections to the, uh, these cloud vendors. Uh, for example, AWS CloudWatch APIs, and that gives us additional semantic data around uh, the, the flow log information itself. So, for example, what region uh, that traffic is coming from or uh, what services are involved. So, by taking advantage of that data, flow logs, as well as other API data from the cloud, we're able to provide that visibility within LiveNX. Thanks, David. Um, here's another question. I think uh, this one is for you, Tim. What? How can um, how can I ensure that our network can scale to meet future business needs without being hampered by increasing software elements and devices to manage? Yeah, I mean that was right up there. That was one of the five select you know selection factors. That was something that we heard from a number of the buyers was making sure that their NPM solution today, as well as ones that they're considering for the future. Can, can scale and that can do that in a unified way. We heard consistently across the interviewees that they really wanted a single pane of glass. They wanted this unified NPM layer that could take in data, uh, analyze performance across the you know, majority of their network and from data center, clouds and SD-WAN. And so to do that in a, scale, in a scalable manner, 
you've really got to have the right MPM solution that can do that. And what we learned from these interviews and what I learned was that the more you kind of piece this together, the less scale that you have and the more issues that you have, not only with unification and reporting, but also network performance monitoring uh, and performance issues as you try to piece all this stuff together. And that really came out in the interviews as um, you know, buyers and, and, and power users really wanted that single platform, that unified platform that could monitor the entire network. Great, thanks, Tim. So with that, um, you can get the full picture and critical insights to choose the right NPM solution by, um, you can watch this webinar again, it will be posted um, shortly. You can also download the buyer's guide that Tim mentioned. We've got the full paper posted on our website at liveaction.com. Or you could also request a one on one LiveNX demo session or download a free trial. And you won't want to miss out on our next webinar coming in March, which is charting a path to successful SD WAN operations. Thank you so much for joining us today.